Welcome. I've been doing a series on the Synology DS918 Plus, and more recently I've been doing one on the QNAP TS453BE. And in this video I'm going to be doing a comparison of the physical aspects, the hardware as such. And I'll put a link in the description of my playlist for both of these, and also put a link to the products themselves. And if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I've had the Synology for about two years, I've had the uh, QNAP for about two months, and these both have the same processor in it. It's an Intel processor. It's a J3455. It's a Celeron. It's 1.5 gigahertz. It goes up to 2.3 gigahertz. And the configurations I got these, this had four gigabytes of RAM, and this had two gigabytes of RAM. I've upgraded this to 16. I've tested this also works with 16. So both of these have four hard drives in them. I'll open the front here on the QNAP. You slide a little lever on the side and this comes off. Um, these require a key, but you could just stick a screwdriver in here. There we go. So to remove these, you just turn it, you pull here and this slides out and it clips right back in. These you pull down on this tab and they slide out. So I found these are easier to get into. Um, you just turn the key slides in, locks in place nicely. Um, these aren't too bad. I can pull this out. I found this one to be kind of hard to get out because you can't stick your hand on the left side here. So you got to kind of pull out. It's a little trickier. On the front here we have lights, we have status, disc 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a USB 3.0 and a power button. On the QNAP we have a power button. We have status, LAN, USB. We have USB 3.0, and this is a copy button. So you can stick a thumb drive in here, press that, and it will automatically copy the files from the thumb drive to your NAS device. So I also have a DS718 Plus, which is the little uh, smaller version of this. It's nearly identical to this, but it has just two drives. And it also has that USB feature on it. So memory is accessed. If you take these drives out, it's right inside here on the motherboard. The motherboard's right mounted but like this on both models, so you can access the memory on both of them pretty easily. Synology has a vent on the side in their little logo. QNAP has a little vent on the side there. And there's a vent on both sides. Synology has the same logo. Let's look at the bottom. So the Synology has uh, two slots for NVMe cards. The bottom here has a vent. So here's the back of the devices. Let me see if I can adjust this. Okay, so the Synology has two smaller fans and the QNAP has one larger fan. They both have a Kensington lock on it. They both have a dual ethernet. These both have gigabit ethernet. So these both have a little hole with a button for reset. So there's one here and here. This one has the uh, eSATA out. So you can plug in a hard drive. I plug in my backup drive there and it has a four pin power connector. This has a standard barrel power connector. This has four more USB 3.0 ports in the back. This one has one more USB port. So if you need USB ports, the QNAP has way more. So this has two, this has five. So that's a big difference there. Um, this has two HDMI out on it. So you can actually plug monitors into this and you cannot plug monitors into this one. And then it has your kind of standard PC um, audio. So it has microphone one, microphone two, and looks like that's audio out. So you could plug that into like a receiver or something. And then it has a PCI port here so you can take the cover off and you can mount a board in there. So one of the cards they make available is a gigabit, a 10 gigabit ethernet card and it has slots on it for NVMe drives. So if you have to add NVMe drives you want this. Um, this is the, probably the better option right out of the box. For this one you have to add that card. It's pretty expensive for that 10 gigabit ethernet card. So the cases on both of these are plastic. So it's plastic here and here. This is metal in the back. I think this might be metal but I'm not real sure. But it has a metal you know, cage inside. The motherboard's mounted on a metal chassis. So I haven't seen anything with either of these that would make me say don't buy them. Um, I've been using this one longer. I'm more familiar with this one. but. But uh, hardware-wise, this is uh, very capable. Uh, this one did come with four gigabytes of RAM, and I think that's better than the two in here if you're gonna be doing multiple things. Like I said, I upgraded to 16, but I think if you're not comfortable upgrading to 16, um, because I could void your warranty, uh, I would probably go to four or eight at least. 
So this had one 4 gigabyte card in it. You could add a 4 gigabyte card to this. On this one you'd want to add probably two 4 gigabyte cards. This is probably a little better for upgrading RAM because you only have to one, add one card. This one, if you want to go to eight, you'd have to add two cards. But like I say, I'm kind of giving you the numbers and you can figure out what you want for yourself. Um, I would probably definitely add another two gig card in here at a minimum, just so you can use the dual channel memory and you can um, you know, have four gigabytes of RAM. Although if it's working on the two gig, there's no reason to mess with it, it's fine. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. I'll probably make some future videos on comparisons between these two different models, especially on the software end. But I just want to talk about the hardware a little bit so you can kind of see what you're getting for, um, you know, right out of the box. So if you have any questions about this, please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.